ESPN, the world leader in motorsports coverage, today is in Cranon, Wisconsin for the 25th running of the Chevrolet World Championship. Take a look at that crowd as we take a look also at the race conditions. 65 beautiful degrees, only a 20% chance of rain. This is absolutely ideal conditions. Great racetrack we got to. This is the granddaddy, Marty, the big one. Oklahoma Land Rush start. You've got to get to that first corner first. Two-mile track, lots of speed. You better bring some horsepower. Yes, and they put up a fence around Parsons Pond because uh, it was named after Dave Parsons after he took a swim several years ago. So uh, we don't have to worry about anybody uh, dropping into the pond. Now, this is the parade that they held downtown. you got to remember, Crandon, Wisconsin, is a community of 2,000 people, and they support this race. In fact, they have built it into their trademark, and they have uh, done a great job over the 25 years and this was their celebration and this was my favorite the bedrock mobile i mean look <laughs> what a great piece of work take a look at this capacity crowd as we're getting ready for the last race of the day you know we talk about the punishment that these trucks take well ivan's going to take us behind the scenes and show us some of the drive train components ivan you always hear me talk about what it takes to win these races out here in Class 8 and Class 4 especially. I want to show you some of the drivetrain components these guys are using. They all use an automatic transmission. This one's a hydromatic, three-speed, used out of Jack Flannery's Class 4 truck. This is the rear end housing. They use a spool in the rear end. This is the spool right here. This is what connects the two rear tires together. This is the piece that makes it so hard for these guys to turn in the mud. Both tires drive together, called a spool. This is a stock axle, about a 31-spline axle out of a truck. This is a 45-spline axle out of J Scott Douglas's truck. This is the kind of axle, this is the kind of technology it's going to take to win races out here with these guys. Well, let's get ready now for the manufacturer's challenge. These are production pickups. You've already seen them. They must run in their class race. They're two- and four-wheel drives. They must conform to the class rules. In the Chevrolet starting field, brand-new class four champion, Greg Gerlach. He'll be in the 402 from Dakota, Minnesota. Walker Evans, our class eight king for 1994. He'll be in the Dodge. Jeff Dore also in the starting field. He'll be in one of the Fords. He's from Rockford, Illinois. Scott Taylor from Belvedere, Illinois. Another one of the Ford contingent. And then leading Chevy Thunder. Well, it'll be Jack Flannery looking for revenge here in the Manufacturer's Challenge in his hometown of Crandon. Son Jamie will give him double-barreled action. He'll be in the number 815. Jack Heitman. Heitman, 43 years old from Marquette, Michigan. He'll be in another one of the Fords. And here is the rest of the starting field. And this is going to be a huge, huge turn one. 26 trucks in all diving for that first corner. Hey, Marty, you know what's going to be interesting? These guys have either won their class championship or they lost it. They no longer have to save their trucks. They can just go out and race and have a good time. Have a good time. I like the way you say that. <laughs> this could be a holy terror going into turn one as the green flag flies and we are on board with Walker Evans. Look at the acceleration. <laughs> You're talking about horsepower and throwing dirt. Boy, he is on the inside there and Kevin Probst. Probst out in front of Walker and Steve Kelly looks like he's on third and then uh, is that Jack Flannery on the outside? Look out, don't get into that. Wow, that was awfully close to that fencing. That was awful wide. The closer to that fence than I'd want to get, I'll tell you. Look at that. Everybody made it through turn one. On board with Scott Douglas. Douglas, uh oh Oh, getting into Gerald Foster, and Foster goes over. So Gerald Foster takes some uh, contact as Scott Douglas not able to get on the binders in time and gets into him. I think it was an easy rollover, though. I don't think it was a major, shouldn't be a big major, major problem for Gerald. Hopefully the uh, crews will get him back out and uh, he'll be able to continue. Right now, uh, as that was going on, Walker Evans did get around. Kevin Probst has taken the early lead here. Ooh, this, is, this is good. Two-wheel oh. drive versus four-wheel drive. Look at the view as you have got Kevin Probst all over your back bumper. And what Kevin Probst is seeing is a lot of dirt being thrown up by Walker Evans. It might be a little smart for him to stay off. Be a little patient. Now it's going to pay to be patient sometimes. Get off the side. Let him go. Just hang with him. Yeah, right. I, <laughs> I've seen you drive some of these stadium races, Ivan. You don't wait. You stick your nose right down in there. Well, I didn't say I was the smartest off-road race car driver. <laughs> <laughs> down the straightaway one more time. Walker Evans got the hand. Oh, look at that. When, that. when those trucks carry all four wheels, that is so pretty. It is beautiful. I, love, I just love to watch them. This is what is truly a lot of fun for us because, like you said, Ivan, the championships are decided. This one's for bragging rights. You don't have to save anything. This is the last race of the season for us. Everybody can let it hang out. Whoa, Steve Kelly, he's going to end it on a sour note as he has lost 
fire in his Dodge and parked it. Walker Evans has got a right front flat tire, Marty. Yep, you can see it shaking. Good eyes, Ivan. And that's why he is now no longer in the lead. So, boy, can you imagine if that would have happened in the Class 8 race? Boy, it's a good thing. More smoke coming from Jack Flannery's motor. Remember, he had problems in the Class 4 championship. Right now, Flannery has gotten past Walker Evans. Walker barely going to make it around. He's got a long way to go to pit lane. He's going to be down the wheel by the time he gets there. A lot of people don't realize that there's big rocks out here. I mean, there's some nasty ones. Uh, nasty enough that if you ever get hit by one of them, it could just literally knock you cold. I mean, it, th there are some huge ones. And, and boy, Walker's got a handful because he's still a good, oh, probably another three quarters of a mile until he gets back to uh, pit lane. He is. It's going to be a long drive for him. Long day right now. So he's nursing his way around the racetrack. Jack Flannery there going by. Let's see who else has gotten by. That's Kurt Ledoux in third. Then fourth looks like Jeff Dore. And fifth looks like it's Scott Taylor. As Scott is right behind Jeff Dore. Boy, this is a great shot as those three are diving for that last corner. Here the engine RPM come up, Marty. As they just they cross the top of that hill, the truck leaves the gravel. But it's not enough to come off the top. Here the engine come up and they go back down again as it gets a good bite with those tires. Kevin Probst out in front. Got a good size lead over second place Jack Flannery. Then here is third place. Dore has gotten around Ledoux and Taylor. So there is third, fourth, and fifth. Don't go anywhere. You won't miss a thing, we promise. It's the Chevrolet World Championships, the final race of the year. Marty Reed, Ivan Stewart, Rick Johnson back with you, and we've got a new leader. Jack Flannery has taken over. I know we promised you wouldn't miss anything. Well, you haven't. That's what happened. Kevin Probst just slowed down and has pulled over and is out of this race. So another sad ending for his season. Everybody wants to do well in that last race because it does. It carries over momentum. It really does. And he's had so much trouble. He just, you know, they get the car working good and he has a little problem. He's putting him out. Jeff Doerr is now second. Kurt Ledoux is third. Scott Taylor fourth. And you just saw Scott Douglas flying by. And Smoking, we're on... by the way. Did you notice? No, I didn't. Uh, good eyes. Uh, this is on board with Scott Taylor. Whoa! Coming across the bow. That's Kurt Ledoux. See, these guys have all got different lines. This is down the long straightaway runoff area here. These guys have all got different areas they like to be in. So Taylor looks like he has gotten around Ledoux for third place. And yes, he has. So you get the view from outside, and you can see exactly what Scott Taylor knows already transpired. He is in third. Kurt Ledoux is in fourth. And then Scott Douglas is in fifth. Interesting note, Marty, that the class eight or the two-wheel drive trucks are obviously going to be a little bit lighter. And the class four has got to carry a transfer case. They're going to be heavier. Uh-oh, we got big problems I, I, I can see the smoke now. <laughs> <laughs> we got major problems. I'm afraid Scott Douglas. Two of them. Oh, a great Gerlach has got, what, that looks like a brake that is locked up. It really does. And literally is just uh, melting. Now this is the battle for six. That's Jimmy Crowder and uh, Jamie Flannery. So those two going after each other. And obviously a little contact somewhere for Jamie. He's lost a quarter panel. The point I was going to make earlier, Marty, was the fact that the eights are lighter. And they're a little more agile where they got four-wheel drive pulling you, but they're heavier. So two different battles up here. Sometimes it's an advantage to have the four-wheel drive, sometimes two. And right now, there is Jack Flanders. We're back up front. He's in first place now as he has taken over, as Kevin Probst has gone out with another problem. And on board again with Scott Taylor. Taylor currently in third, trying to close down on Jeff Dore. And there is Dore in his gun sights. And he's going to try that inside line. Heading down the ground. Whoops. Jeff gets way wide and it's going to cost him. Dore looks like he's lost front-wheel drive. You think so? I didn't see that. Oh, no, look out, Flannery. Oh, Ooh. my goodness. Ooh, man. Flannery. Hit that pole hard. The white flag would have been coming out on this lap. You see what Jack Flannery sees. Let's let's go through this game. What happened? Well, it looks like the throttle stuck or something. It's hard to say, Marty. I can't tell if he just got out of control, the throttle stuck or what. He got up on two wheels. That's the problem. He tries to correct it. Didn't come out of the throttle. Corrects it. Saves the rollover, but hits the pole. Oh, my. And that is a brand new finish line that they just put up this year. I think they're going to have to replace it. But it did its job. It gave way. Boy, I hope he's all right. I'll tell you. Let's take another look on board with Jack Flannery. Hold on. I don't think the throttle's picking up. Here's the throttle. Up on two wheels. Two. It's 
And then you roll over and you get a mouthful of dirt. And luckily you get out and you're okay. He's moving around. That, just... That's the best news. Yes, there he is. So, gosh, what a, this is probably the worst year Jack Flannery's ever had at Crane. Look at shaking his head. He's oh. just wondering, my goodness. Hometown race and he smacks the pole right from the start finish line. While things end on a down note for Jack Flannery, they're going to end on an uptick for Scott Taylor. As he has got one turn to negotiate and he will squarely look at the checkered flag. And I guarantee you he isn't going to go around that corner too fast as he sees the end result of Jack Flannery's accident and he wins the manufacturer's challenge here at Cranon, Wisconsin at the Chevrolet World Championship. Stay with us. We'll talk through our winner and close out the 94 season after this. Well, there you see the end result of the collision between Jack Flannery and the finish line pole. The upright is bent and so is the finish line banner across the top. That is uh, the damage on Jack's truck as it also rolled over, and they're inspecting that. Here are the final results in the Manufacturer's Challenge. Scott Taylor, Kurt Ledoux in second. He got around Jeff Dore, who was having problems there at the end. Jamie Flannery in fourth, and there is the rundown through the top ten. Let's check in with a very happy Scott Taylor. Well, you know what? I could feel the truck after a lap working three times better than yesterday, and I was catching traffic and passing traffic, and the truck was working good, and I wasn't feeling any problems, any glitches, and I just kept it as fast as I could run it. And I started picking cars off, and I noticed my radio guys radio to me. I'm moving up. They said I was in third. I passed door. I was in second, and then Flanny was in front of me, and then all of a sudden Flanny wasn't there. It was kind of a gimme from him, but the toughest survived. The best wins. So, Ivan, it brings us to a close of another off-road season. Well, I tell you what, Marty. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate you using me. I love doing this. I can't wait till next year. Well, thank you, and thanks to Rick Johnson as well down Pittside. Thank you to everyone at Soda, the promoters, the racers. We've had a great time for all of us here at ESPN. We hope you've enjoyed it as well. We've enjoyed bringing it to you, and we look forward to bringing it to you again next year right here on ESPN's B-World. This is Marty Reed. So long, everybody.